a Creative Mind, an online audio version of Flash Fiction Stories written by Carrie Zilka and Alice Nelson. More information about the authors as well as past episodes can be found at acreativemindfiction.com. This is part one and two of a four-part series. All four parts came out of prompts from the Writer's Hangout Flash Fiction Contest. Part one, his nemesis. The roar of the crowds washed over him. He stood on the balcony high over the courtyard. Their cries of adulation reached his ears and created a sense of warmth even the bright sunshine couldn't match. His eyes traveled from group to group. Women, children, and men gathered in the square. Some waved flags with the telltale dragon emblem. Women waved scarves, and the children merrily clapped their dirty little hands as they danced. He drank it in. Standing before them, he savored the knowledge that these people worshipped him, that they truly believed he was their savior. He was high enough that he could see the entire square, but low enough to make out individual faces. He smiled as his gaze lit upon mothers and husbands and sisters, in the mass of bodies that made up a small fraction of his newly subjugated population. He was feeling quite pleased with himself and the grand ruse he had executed when his eyes fell upon a woman standing a third of the way into the throng. It was her. She stood amidst the chaos and revelry, blonde hair shining in the sun, penetrating gaze never wavering as her eyes caught and held his own. The noise lessened, the warm air chilled, the joy he felt waned as he realized she'd found him yet again. She was a higher angel who'd readily accepted the task of destroying him and had plunged from the highest peaks of light to seek him out. She was one of the few who knew what he truly was and what he'd done to become a high-ranking demon. He'd survived the trials and completed the tasks in order to gain permission to mask his true form in human guise. And since that fateful day, after every victory, she'd found him. And now, at the height of his greatest triumph, she was there. The angel didn't move. She merely stood there, allowing the river of dancing fools to part and flow around her. As beautiful as a statue made of marble. Even his demonic heart had a hard time resisting her loveliness. His fingers tightened around the balcony railing as he leaned forward. Their eyes locked, and even from this height he caught her eye twitch. He knew she would come for him, not here in front of his now loyal subjects. People who had no idea their new prince was actually a supernatural being. No, she'd not open that Pandora's box. But she'd come for him, and soon. He could almost feel her impatience for this dance to be over. He, however, enjoyed this battle that had raged for decades. She always found him no matter where he went or what disguise he wore. And he always escaped, no matter how badly beaten. She was a constant for him, and one he'd begun to anticipate. A small part of him rejoiced at the thought of the upcoming battle. A small part that loved this eternal adversary. Perhaps this time would be different. Perhaps this time he'd win and the battle would come to its final conclusion. He hoped not. Chapter 2. I Followed You The skin-to-skin -skin contact of bodies pressing close to her made the already warm sunshine seem like it was on fire. People danced around her, singing and clapping and shouting. Some jostling her or drunkenly bumping into her, but she barely felt them. She barely noticed the revelry. Her attention was reserved for one particular person. He was there. He was right there. She nearly snarled at the thought of this despicable creature she'd been chasing from one end of the universe to the other for centuries. One of the worst demons in history, she'd heard about his cruel antics long before the call had gone out for a rare, dark retribution. She'd been chosen out of the seven eager volunteers and had been chasing him, catching him, beating him, and losing him ever since. A human scribe once told her the definition of insanity was repeating the same action, expecting different outcomes each time. While admittedly angels were higher beings compared to humans, she wasn't sure how much more of this she could mentally take. She'd tracked and battled Malik nearly two dozen times in the last two hundred years, and somehow he always managed to escape her before she could get him to the Retributioner. As she stood watching him, her hands unconsciously curled into fists. She thought about how she'd followed him from one solar system to the next, from world to world as he attempted to escape her. But this conquering human guise was a new one. He'd never before been so brazen, always keeping to the shadows in his attempt to wreak havoc while simultaneously eluding her. She shook her head. No matter. He could surround himself with thousands of adoring followers or with a legion of soldiers. She would find him. She would attack him with holy fury and smite him down. This time it would be different. This time she'd procured a binding sigil. She would be able to physically bind him to her and he'd be forced to go wherever she went. 
She'd happily give her life to finally be able to drag him kicking and screaming straight to the retribution hall. She watched as he strategically stepped forward into the sunlight, the golden beams catching the buckles and accents on his garb, creating a halo effect like he was a god or blessed by one. But his blue eyes conveyed no warmth, and she waited until he finally saw her. She took grim satisfaction when she saw his smile fade slightly and a flicker of uncertainty flash across his face. She locked eyes with him and refused to let go. She wanted him to know she was there, and that she was coming for him. She hoped her outwardly calm demeanor unsettled him, because inside, she was screaming in fury and anticipation. That was chapter one and chapter two. Tune in next week for chapter three and four. Thank you for listening to this week's story. You can find me on Twitter at Carrie Zilka, C-A-R-R-I-E-Z-Y-L-K-A. You can also find a Creative Mind Fiction podcast on Twitter. Our handle is at Fiction Podcasts. You can always find us on Facebook. If you're a writer and would like to participate, check out acreativemindfiction.com. There are links to all the writing stories on the website. Be sure to find us on iTunes, on your iPhone, or Stitcher Radio on your Android device. Just search for A Creative Mind Fiction Podcast and hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to get your free audiobook download by going to audibletrial.com slash fiction.